sometimes and watch. And then sometimes, oh, I'll, hear, then sometimes I'll hear a rod go, oh, maybe we need to turn this off for a second. <laughs> and you go away, I'm like, God, oh, it's, it's just getting good. It's, um, it's been interesting. <clears throat> I'd like to welcome everyone to Let's Talk Racing <laughs> uh, as we're getting started here in the background having a little bit of fun. Tonight we've got Keith, Kevin Twitchell, Kevin Twitch, Twitchell. Twitchell, sorry about that. It's all right. I got it written down but I don't have it with me. I can't load up the, the face of the... Why can't you load up now? What are you trying to do? That chat thing that uh, the app they have has been getting sucky lately. So like everybody else does, refresh it. Mm -hmm. I did. There you go. Oh, figures. I don't think he's on it either. I was going to try to get on at my office too. We'll just carry on. Okay, that's me. Hit yeah. <laughs> refresh on there. It, it just did. We'll get to it later. Oh, Lord, Doc, I, I you're a pain head. in my butt. You know that? You'll get over it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put you in a race car, slap you around a little bit, make you feel better. <coughs> I need a pad. You got a pad? I know there's one over there somewhere. Because if I don't write notes, I'll forget. Kevin Twitchell. That's what I'm doing right now. So Twitch Motorsports. Twitch Motorsports? Yes, sir. Is he twitchy when he drives? He might be after the first race. <laughs> uh, no. Oh, we got it. I got, I got one for you. You remember uh, McFaul? No, uh, Michael? Michael Paul? Thank you, Paul. Yep. He was running Kevin Twitch. Uh, Grand Slash for the late model. T-W-I-T-C-H-E-L-A. <laughs> and then just like that, he said, "You asshole." Mm -hmm. <laughs> you did what? You need to sh if you're gonna say it, you gotta uh, share it. You forgot our lights too. Oh, I said, "Good plug." We're in the dark. Hey, put you in the dark. Feed your BS. You'll be your usual mushroom. It looks like we're not gonna have um yeah. chat room. Yeah, it's having problems. Uh, I tell you, every time we get something working good, rely on somebody else. To Stuff goes downhill. It's like a sponsor with that blank check and forgets to sign it. <laughs> We've all been there. I'll take him. One of the nationwide guys got him almost a quarter million dollar sponsor. He's still in pain. I get 10% of it. All right. Hold on, I'm gonna try it one more time, Kevin, and then 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 I'll Why get to you. Why don't you talk and click at the same um, time? Is that like you, you're driving and chewing gum don't work either? No, I can drive and chew gum. I can back and do just about anything and talk at the same time. Sometimes. No, no. no. I see no, I see him playing the racetrack talking at the same time. Damn right. But well, it ain't working, so we, right. guess what? We we can just wing it on our own. That sounds good. You, <coughs> no, you're gonna drive mini trucks, right? Yes, they're super trucks. To me, there always there'll always be many trucks, right? Am I right? That's right. <laughs> okay. What kind? Did you get a truck yet? Yeah, I have, I have a, uh, a Ford Don't Ranger. <laughs> what year? Uh, I believe it was '85. '85. Uh, built all that. It's all not, it's not all built yet. It's, it's in the works. In the works. Mm -hmm. Is not head over here helping you? Somewhat, yeah. Somewhat. Somewhat. You helping him? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's about sixty percent done. Is it? Did you buy it? Did you build it? It's a pre-built truck. Pre-built? It's one of Barclays old trucks. Who's? Charles, Charles Barclays. Barclays. Oh, is it? The old 60 truck. Yeah. Oh, okay. Who'd you, did you get that from? Uh, I traded one of my trucks for it from another guy. Oh, did you? Yeah. So, looking for is it. Have you ever raced before? No, sir. None whatsoever, and you're mm. just getting in it. How old are you? I'm 30. Oh, Lord. <laughs> You'll like it. Truck series is a pretty good series. You're going with Ford Motor, the whole nine yards. Absolutely. All Ford. That's a good thing. Um, they're going to put drop spindles on them now, I heard. Yep. 
No comment. Bad move. No comment. So, how much do you think the track record will fall by? You'll probably see it drop about two tenths. I was going to say two to three tenths, probably. It's a good thing for the speed, but it's a bad thing for the wallet. Yeah. The wall hurts a lot more. Yeah. Two tenths faster. Yeah. <laughs> Do we want to make them nervous and tell them some horror stories? <laughs> <laughs> I've already warned them enough, I think. Yeah, Have you? Pretty yeah. much. The best thing about racing, and I know uh, you'll agree with me on this, I'm, I'm sure you'll agree, agree with me, is not necessarily right now when you're racing, it's the stories that get told after the race and the bench race and I think is probably the most enjoyable thing there is oh. you know when you sit down and talk to racers and they start telling stories and oh I remember when I did this and when I did that that's what you're gonna find the hardest part is racing right the hardest part is driving the easiest part is telling the stories and, and that is actually am I right is that, is that true I mean you can tell the stories the way you want them to go well, oh yeah, there's always that little, you stretch the truth a little bit, but... Just like fishing. Yeah, just like fishing, yeah. You, you know, I caught two fish that big, yeah. you know, that's the, the, the thing. You still caught them two fish, right. you just, you know, exactly. how much you expand on it. Um, but you, you never race. You've ever had an interest in racing? Oh yeah, always, but uh, never really afford it, so... Money has always been the always been the issue. Always been the issue, and I hear you on that. That's the way it is with everybody, right? You know. Um, and we're gonna try it out. You got any sponsors yet? Got your number picked out? I got a number. Yes, sir. Number twenty-two. Twenty-two. Yes, sir. No, no sponsors yet. No sponsors. Working on that though. Trying to. Yes. Trying to. I think he's got a brother-in-law that'll probably would <laughs> kick in. <laughs> Tell Josh I said hi. By the way, too. I haven't seen him in a while. Um, how'd you get 22? Uh, I like 22, double deuce, so. Just, that's the only just, reason? Just, just, yeah, pretty much. Okay. How'd you get yours? I'm going to act Brad Causey sitting over here. <laughs> how'd you get yours, double zero? Uh, I inherited mine. I, I bought the car from Jimmy Atkins, and it was double zero when I bought it. I wanted to go number seven, but of course Jimmy Overton had number seven. Right. So I stuck with it for the first year. And then after a while, like anything, the number grows on you. People yep. know you by the number. So it just kind of stuck with me after that. And ever since then, we started up the Double Trouble Motorsports with Chris Roberts. And he went with the 11. Yep. I, went with the, I stayed with the double zero. And then uh, when Kevin came along, we were talking about numbers. And he was talking about how he liked double deuce. I said, well, that fits in perfect with the fits Double in, Trouble Racing. It fits in perfect, so yeah. I said, I, said, I, said, I said, do double digits, I'll help you. That's so right. here I am. <laughs> and we're going to try to uh, see what we can do. It, it leaf spring car truck. Yeah, I yeah. got to use the same truck. Leaf, leaf springs, springs with the I beams. With the I beams, twin front end, twin I beams up front. Yeah, they're not bad. <coughs> no, no. You, you got to know how to make them what you want. And exactly. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Know how to cheat them up. I don't cheat. <laughs> I know him too well. <laughs> the, I, I've said it before, and I'll say it a thousand times. There is, n I have never seen a race car out there in the top ten that doesn't have something illegal on it. I agree. Whether it be intentional or not intentional, you can always go through a race car and find something illegal on it. Yep. Period. End of conversation. Am I, I am I right? Mm -hmm. it, it's not that they're intentionally, but the way they do these rules these days, you're going to find something. Right. Point blank period. Yep. You're gonna find it. Yep. You know. Where you where you do it at and how it's done and, and how it's done and what color it is and exactly exactly how well you hide it. A little bit of dirt thrown in the paint it can help it out. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, I took a friend of mine to look in an old. It was pure stock then and then grand stock, and I knew the car. And I'm not going to mention no names, but I knew the car. I knew whose it was, knew the whole story on it, and he, he said, do you want? Do you think I should get it? And I says, well, you're going to have to do a lot of work to get it back legal, and he's like, oh, I didn't see nothing wrong with it. I said, oh, it's there. You just don't know it. You know? Oh, yeah. 
I can so. tell you a story of one that I worked on that I thought was 100 percent legal. I was helping him. Sure enough, and he's listening. He'll know who I'm talking about. Got to working on it, helped him do some body work on it. Popped a quarter panel open. What fell out? About a 10 pound block. Yep. That's back when we couldn't add lead. Yeah, it's when you couldn't add lead. Yeah. Yeah. So and he probably didn't even know it was back there. He bought, he bought it that way. Yeah. He bought it from a guy and bought it that way, and like I said, cut the quarter off and it fell out. I've, I've seen cars with double floor pans in them, right. high lead, mm-hmm. you know, the whole nine yards. Speaker boxes with lead, U-car Spe- days. Yep, U-car days. I caught a couple of them when I was an official out there. Ford Probe. <laughs> yep. Chevy Cavalier. Yep. Oh, so, yeah. They're out there, and it's going to happen, and sometimes you're going to have to, how we should say, modify race cars right. to make them go faster. Absolutely. And in the Ranger, you probably will modify a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Chad Canal said, it's official rules to make them. It's my, it's my job to try to break them. Yep. And that's true. Mm-hmm. That, that's true. Try to get around them is what I say. Yeah, he said he prides himself in it. And he does a damn good job. Exactly. Hence, four or five champions. Yep. You know. So, he didn't get away with a whole lot this year, though. They they kept pretty, rain, pretty good reins on him. Mm-hmm. Going to be ready for the first... Absolutely, absolutely. What do you do for a living? Or, or uh, I'm a truck driver. Truck driver? Yeah, I drive for Reinhardt Food Service. Reinhardt, so you're local. Yes, sir. You just stay local? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that'll help you a little bit. <laughs> you, you, you're like me. You get to deal with the traffic every day. Absolutely. And a pain in the butt, ain't it? Mm-hmm. So, where are you at now? Shipyard still. Are you really? 15 years. Has it been that long? Yep, been there a long time. Wow. You missed the layoffs and all that then? I was one of the lucky ones for the first time. For the first time? Yeah. There might be a round two coming. We'll see. Oh, is there really? Yeah. There's talks of it. <sighs> Count your blessings, you know. That's how it goes. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, th- I think Kevin's going to be okay, though. He just, like, he's, the good thing is you know, he'll tell you what his goals are, and he's got realistic goals, which is good, and that's what I like when he came to talk to me about it. And um, I mean, that's the big thing. is he got, You don't have goals over his head. But yeah, he's got things he thinks he can accomplish. What are your goals? Uh, I like to be <coughs> top ten truck every week, about mid season, you know, consistent top five truck. And you know, get as much seat time as I can. A couple years from now, go after the championship. Finish every lap, finish every race. Yes, sir. That's in in top ten, that's that's a good goal. Make the <coughs> truck a little bit better, make it a little bit faster, and just get better and better and better and better. It'll come with more seat time. So. Yeah. The more seat time you get, the better off you're going to be. Yes, sir. Point blank, period. Right, you won one, or Brad, I'm sorry, I called you Red. Um, you won a championship. Yeah. 99, 2000? 2001. 2001. Yeah. Yeah, I won 2001 uh, driving, and then I helped Craig Furman in the trucks about three years ago. We won the truck championship. Seven, oh seven, I think. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. And then um, he's basically got a truck very similar to what Craig had. Craig had. Um, Craig's Ranger was a little bit newer, but uh, same basic suspension, so I think we're going to be okay. And uh, I said, just have some fun. That's a big thing. As long as he has fun, I'll keep helping. That's that's the reason I walked away for a while. Is you know when you start stop start losing the fun, it's time to take a break. Right. It's a hobby. People need to remember that. E- exactly. Yeah, you're not. You know. It, at our age, and I know I'm a lot older than both of y'all, right. I know I'm not going cup. I know I'm not going, you know, nationwide or, or trucks or anything like that. So to us, this year, it was fun. Right. We enjoyed every single race. You, you know, whether we got screwed or not, we still could walk away from that race saying we had a good time that day. And, and, and that was the biggest thing that we wanted to do. Our only goal, and it's, you know, I said it to somebody, and and they thought I was crazy. Our goal was to win every race. We knew we had a solid car. We knew we had, you know, we had a top three car every time. We knew that going into this year. So when we set our goal at winning every race, it wasn't that we were going to. But when we walked into that track, that's what we wanted to do was win that race. You want to be a threat every week. And we were, and that's you know, goal accomplished. Yep. You know, we wanted to be that threat every week, and we were, and and that's what we wanted. We had a blast doing it. 
you know, we didn't tear the car up. That was one of the huge things that helped us out this year, and right. you need to keep that in mind. Sometimes it's better to go for second place. Oh, absolutely. Than it is to tear that. You know, you can't you can't get it into a lot of people's minds that two points and twenty five extra dollars, you know, will cost you more in the long run. Yeah. You know, take your time. You know, be patient. You know, if you can't get that leader the right way, and it's going to take you out. Just settle for second. Pays off in the end. So I hate not having the check because I'm now I'm always looking down, and now you got me self conscious over here. Check every five seconds. Yeah. It's a Facebook thingy. It's a Facebook thingy. Oh, there it says uh, Stevens on. It says start chatting now, and a web page still not available. <coughs> so. That's weird, ain't it? Yes, sir. Same guy, different. Different icon. Different icon. So when are we going to have the truck done? When is this going to be done? Uh, hope, hopefully mid-February, 1st of March. Get plenty of test time. Get, plenty, uh, get ready for media day. Be out there for media day. Media day. That's always a good thing to do. And then try and get as much practice in as we can before the first race. You gonna be out there the whole time? Um, probably not the whole time. I got a I got a new newborn daughter that just turned a year old or turns a year tomorrow. Tomorrow. So probably I told him I'm gonna try to make it out as much as I can, but it'll probably be I'll probably be out there every other race helping him out. Um, definitely be helping him out during the week because he lives right across the street from me. Oh, okay. So I'll be helping him out during the week, but um, he might be on his own as far as at the track some weeks. Got a crew yet? <coughs> I haven't got a crew yet. Really. Better start incorporating them. Yeah. Hitting your buddies up, making phone calls. Hey, I need your help. Hey, I need your help. I got Bud Light in the cooler. That's right. <laughs> yep, that's always a good thing, too. But so he, he should be good. Like I said, we'll hopefully have it ready when he gets a track, so he won't hopefully need too much. And You've been out at Langley, right? Yes, sir. I've been, I've been there quite a few. Okay. And you've helped out anybody? Have you, have you worked on a truck or a car or anything? Uh, I, I built a 69 Pro Street Chevy pickup. I know how to work on trucks. You just haven't. Racing wise. Racing wise. Right. So in other words, you've just been a fan out there, decided you wanted to do right, this. Right. Boom, here we go. That's it. Just rock and roll. Why didn't you get him a Pro Six, man? Um, we talked about it. We talked about different classes and we and actually believe it or not, he was trying to decide between a U car and a truck and a super truck. And uh, we talked about Pro Sixes and stuff, but um, with his budget that he was looking to spend I felt like, really, I felt like the trucks were probably the, the most economical for him. Um, just from <coughs> the standpoint that he, he wants to run some different tracks, and the trucks are working on some deals, from what I'm hearing, to try to run a few different tracks as well. Not not for championships, just race here and there. Right. Um, I was real familiar with the trucks, and um, the U cars have just outpriced themselves about five to ten grand too high. So I told myself, yeah. my opinion is, if you want to run economically, and that, and I had a lot of friends in the trucks, obviously, because I, you know, I'm, I'm friends with Troy right. Dredge, we're friends with Robbie Davis and them, so as far as help, you know, on his budget, you know, like uh, Robbie and Troy are going to give us some of their old tires to start out on, start season out on, just to give us some seat time, and then um, once he picks up some sponsors, then we'll kind of go from there and start buying some tires, and, and um so just with all that, when all that came into play, with the help we had from other people, made it, sense. Yeah, it just made yeah. sense. And we had that we came across a deal on the truck about the same time. So it was kind of like jump on an hour or get left behind. See, so I said another year. Wait, wait, wait a year or two, and then come yeah. on up pro six. Oh, so. I tell you what, the, two three years ago, I would have told you absolutely not. Don't don't touch a pro six. But I will tell you, in the last year, I'll be the first one to say that I've jumped from one bandwagon to the other. If I were to get into racing today, it would it would probably be a pro six, and I would promote the heck out of it to try to get more tracks to run on. And you're not the first person to say that. And and somebody else pointed out to me just before our banquet, and, and I said, you know, I've noticed I was the same way. I'm like, man, two years ago I was like pro six. Then I got involved with one, and then I got to drive one, and then I you know then I got more and more involved, and I'm like, man, this is the way to go. This is the most economical thing, and I'm not I'm not trying to toot its horn, but I'm, now that we're on the subject, 
it, it really is, and it's probably more like a late model than a lot of people realize it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know. From what I've seen up there, they're definitely they've done a good job with them. The only thing that killed them at the beginning was, in my eyes, what one thing was lack of promotion when they first came out. It did. You know, you can't run with four cars and not promote. Yeah. And that's one of the big things that I've seen a lot this year. You know, it's a promoting of it. Yep. Um, and it's just like you said, it's it's the drive the class of drivers that are coming out now with your Doug Warrens and people like that, your Casey Sipes. Yep. You know, the guys that have got some experience now are showing that you can drive them, not wreck them, and still have a good time. Yeah. And very seldom do I ever see one get tore up. And that's, that's part of the economics. We tore one up one time this year. Um, when me and TJ Guthrie got together and I tore up the, the left front, if I would have had to go buy everything, probably about six, seven hundred bucks. But I was able to go to a late model team and get an AR. You know, the rack had an extra rack so that helped me out the shocks you know seventy dollars you know still had the spring but everything that I needed for that car I could have gone to a excuse me a late model team and got you know used I didn't have to buy all brand new and it, it that made us I didn't have to go to the junkyard and search for parts yeah. then get them you got to clean them up rebushing them the whole nine yards and put them on it was bang bang boom I actually was gone that week, I took off for a whole day, Wednesday, with my dad, and um, the crew did it. They did everything, yep. you know. So that was the nice thing about it, you know. Everybody complained about the motors. These things are, you can't kill them. Yeah. They're just tanks. These motors are just pure tanks. That's one tanks. of the big things I heard when they first came out was the cost of the motors was what was going to kill them. But I haven't seen since then a whole lot of complaints about it. It's like any new thing. You can call Jasper and get a brand new 3.0 motor for $1,800. That ain't bad. Yeah, and, and that's what. Build another class motor for that? Yeah, that, and put it in and run it. You know, and, and that's the, what the nice thing about it is. We did a. We took a boroscope and went through the cylinders at the beginning of this year. We checked the whole motor out, put a new timing belt on it, the whole nine yards. Still has, that motor's eight years old, and it still has the hone marks in it from when it was originally built. Okay, they have such a high nickel content in them, you can't hurt them, you can't kill them. And, you know, they were built literally for a thousand horsepower motor, putting these twin turbos on it, doing all this work to it. Yeah. So you're not going to hurt them. Yeah, they've done a good job. Like I said, the last few years have really turned me around, my eyes around. Like I said, two years ago, I, I'd probably go to a concession stand or go to McDonald's during that race. That's when you take your break and go somewhere. But now, it's like I said, it's getting really good. And, it, and it always helps when you get some of the some of the names in there to kind of help promote it. As well. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you get your Doug Warrens in there, and you get some of the guys that have, that have run other divisions and they come and run this class. Yeah, to show that it's it's not just a out off the wall class. Some, somebody's really got interest in it. Yeah, and it, it helps, and mm -hmm. it's turned my eyes around. It? Casey not winning every race this year helped out a lot. Yeah, exactly. And that's another thing. And it's like any class. You get one driver winning every week. Nobody wants to watch the race anymore. Nobody wants to race, but. You know, I got two wins. Doug Warren or uh, Warren Smigel got two wins. Casey did get three. The girl got one. Doug got one. You know, it was a little bit of mix of everybody, mm -hmm. and that made it more exciting. On the points side too, it made it more exciting because the girl was on my ass to the last two races. Yep. That's when I finally, you know, was able to wrap it up. It wasn't until then, so that even made it more exciting. Oh yeah. Who's gonna dump Matt this week? You yep. know. And that happened quite a bit, by the way. <laughs> but it made it for good racing. It really did. Yeah. Yep. So, That's good. It's a couple of years. We're going to have about 15 this year. We can, we know we're having two built now. Cool. So, and then I heard that um, uh, Butch Orr sold one of his. So that one will be out there full, full time this year, too. I'm not sure who bought it yet. but Yeah, I know... Uh I'm gonna help another kid out there too, a little bit in the trucks. Um, Jack Robinson's a little boy. He, there, he used to run the uh, he ran Grand Stocks, yeah, Grand Super Streets. And he's gonna go trucks. His son's gonna run trucks this year. Um, he approached me a couple weeks ago. I'm probably going to, they live right around the corner from me, so I'm probably gonna help them out a little bit. So they'll be out there. Um, Craig Furman might come back for a few races. Really? We're not sure yet. Um, we're trying to talk him into it. Just doing a few race deal. Uh, Robbie Davis's dad wants him to come run the old five truck. 
Yeah. Because that, 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 the old uh, the 12 truck was Craig's old truck. Yep. So I told Craig that I would help him on that if he ran it. So he may come back for a few races. Robbie's going to come back with his Ford. Yep. And then um, I think they may have another guy driving their Mazda. Right. And um, so it's going to be a good field. And then, of course, you got Tommy Dixon. Um, you've got his niece. They're going to yep. be strong this year. Tommy's yep. always strong. Um, it's going to be a good class. You're, you're you got the 20 three. truck. What's his name from Kessler's? <coughs> oh, yeah. Um, I can't think of his name. Buck you, Munger. Buck Munger. He's going to be there. He was at the driver's meeting. Um, um, Turnage is coming back again this year. Troy, he? He's got his truck. He's got a brand new truck he just built that he's practiced it once, and they're working on getting the kinks worked out of it. Yep. And he was a he was probably the strongest threat to uh, to Robbie, Robbie and, Tommy. and Tommy all year. Um, yeah. It was kind of the Robbie Tommy show all year. <laughs> yeah, think, that's uh, true. Troy finally got his stuff together, and he's done a really good job of getting out there. He's going to be strong. So it's going to be, I think it's going to be a really good division. Yeah. And like Kevin said, he's just going to try to stay out of trouble and just get some seat time, you know. You're not going to win a championship the first year. No. It's very tough to do. Right. <coughs> but, like I said, and, and, and Brett will agree with me, finish every lap, finish on the lead lap, and if you get in the top ten first couple of races, that's fine. But every lap you finish, is better, you're, you're better off. You get better and better every single, right. you know. And as long as you don't have a crew chief that goes and changes everything, and he kind of leaves it the same so you learn how to drive it. Just, um. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that with me. You can ask anybody I've ever helped. That's, I'm, I'm anti that. If yeah. anything, that's what Thursdays are for. If you want to make so, a big change, we'll do it on Thursday. That way, if we don't like it, we'll put it back on. At least on Saturday, we know we know where we can finish. Exactly. And we know he's not going to wreck it. Yep. So yeah. You will learn more by having the exact same setup every time you come out there every single week than you will if you change it every single week. Right. You know, and and that's what a lot of guys don't understand. And there's been a lot of people that I just got to walk away from, and it's just like, no, you're not getting this big picture. Yeah. You know. Um, we might we may try to bribe Craig, and Craig, if you're listening. You may get bribed. Uh, we may try to bribe Craig into uh, doing a few practices to help us get it dialed in because he's got a good feel for what it's supposed to feel like. Right. And it's good to have it set up right. And he'll know the changes that, yeah, that you so can do when, to it. When Kevin gets in the first time, he knows what it's supposed to feel like. Yeah. And so that's what and we're that's a good try thing. to do as well. Leave him a little on the tight side. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just a little. Loose is fast. <laughs> Leave it a little on the tight side. I can see it coming now. I can hear it coming. That's what the, that's what the guy that bought my car thought too. Right, right. Yeah. My car was really loose, and I rebuilt it twice the first two weeks he had it. Yep. I put a new front clip on it twice in a row. Is it even out there anymore? No, it's sitting in his garage. It's actually up for sale right now. Is it really? Yeah. So if anybody's looking for a good Super Street, it's really a Super Street car now. With the way the rules have changed, it's a good, strong, competitive Super Street. It's got a brand new uh, Mike Barrows motor. Zero laps on it. You got that from Jimmy. Is that the car you got from Jimmy? <coughs> yep. Because I know you had a couple. Yeah, yeah. I got rid of all of them, but that was that the one he has is the old Jimmy Atkins car. And the Jimmy Atkins car. So that is a really good car. Yeah. It was Woody Vance's, then it was Jimmy Atkins's, and then it was mine. So it's always been a fast car. Yeah. And um, been twisted a few times, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Looking uh, at all of us driving. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you and Jimmy. I <laughs> So, but yeah, it's a good car. If anybody's looking for a car, uh, I don't remember what the price tag is, but I remember it was really super cheap. He hasn't had it out there for a couple of years. No, it's been um, about two or three years. Yeah, money money got tight for a while yeah. there, and then um, then it just turned into not having time, and then I think now it's just kind of a little bit of a losing interest type thing. Um, but like I said, it's pretty much ready to go. I hung a brand new body on it a year and a half ago. Doesn't even have any paint on it yet. Ready to roll. Somebody got to do a little paint job on it and go race it. And go race it. I think I think he's even got the motor dropped in it now. Does he? Yep. So it's got, it's got some good equipment on it. Who had that? It was um. I can't think of his name. Oh, model car. Yeah. Kevin Irish. That's Kev, what he got from me. Kevin Hours. Irish. Irish. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Still ain't working. Is it? <coughs> no. Have you tried it too? Yeah, I tried it. Yeah. Got anybody it. calling in tonight? I think they're getting bored. Doc! What? We can only talk about so much. <coughs> Let's talk about what Bill Moss has done for the track. How about that? I am very happy with what Bill has done for the track. 
since we're talking about how my opinion has changed over the last couple of years on things. Well, let me hear your opinion on it. What do you think of it? Well, you know, of course you know me and Bill have not always seen eye to eye, but the last two years I have really earned a lot of respect for Bill. Bill has turned my opinion towards him to a totally different way. Bill is one of the guys you have to get to know. Um, he loves racing. He's done, in my opinion, a great job for the track. Um, he's very honest. I learned that in the driver's meeting that we had this year. You know, he didn't beat around the bush. He told he told everybody, you know, no first increases till the track makes money. Yep. And, you know, I hate to say it, but that's what makes makes it successful. Yep. That's what that's where you don't have to sell it in five years because you got yourself so far in debt. Yep. You know? If, if I think if the drivers are patient, which, you know, from a driver's standpoint, we always want to see uh, increases in pay. You know, who doesn't? If I can race for ten dollars, I definitely race for twenty dollars. But you got to look at—it's a hobby. You didn't get into it to make money. When you built the car, you knew what the payout was. When you started yep. the season, you knew what the purses were each week. Yep. So from that standpoint, when you once you enter that first race, you basically agree that you're okay with what he's paying out. So yep. to get halfway through the year and say, because I wrecked my car the first five weeks, all of a sudden you need to increase my pay every week. You can't say that. You knew going into that season that's the way it's going to be. The thing that makes, and I don't know if Bill considers him, uh, he's track owner, promoter, <coughs> but the thing that makes him so good is he's not a promoter. Right. I, I, does that make sense to you? He's not really a promoter. He loves, it's just like you said, he loves racing, he loves doing it, and he wants to make sure that he can make it work so he can be there 10 years from now, not five years. Yeah, exactly. He's not going to be the one that the next business guy has to bail out. Exactly. And that business sense, I think, is what's going to make the track succeed. Exactly. Maybe not today. You know, it's going to be tough for the first couple of years. Yep. And he even said that in the meeting. He's, it's going to be a loss for the first couple of years. Yep. But once he gets those losses out of the way, I think the track's going to really see some big improvements that are yep. going to come. And um, I'll be honest with you, I'm looking forward to it. I'm probably not going to be out there driving-wise, but that's for different reasons. Not, that, that's for that different reasons. With, exactly. with him. But if I had the money, I'd be out there tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, because I, I really like the way the track's going, and I think it's going to turn into a fun track again. Yep. Um, when Butch and Shane ran Southampton, me and Rob used to go there every week, and it was a blast. Yeah. You know, and it, it, they're starting to get that mentality out there again, and that morale where you actually you feel like you can actually go to the officials for things. Yep. So I think they're doing a re really good job. They're not. They're not BSing you anymore. A lot of tracks like doing that. And I won't mention no names to other tracks that I've gone to. That that's what it is. It's a BS. They just BS you to get you in there and get your money and, and get you out. Yep. As to where Bill is being very honest with his drivers, he's being very honest with his crew, and he's treating everybody really well out there. I think, in in my opinion, and, and he's bringing Tour and Series in. I know Terry's there. You can hold on. We're on a subject. <laughs> Terry, you can chew, you can chew him out later. Hey, I'm enjoying it. Keep digging. Keep digging it. <laughs> Keep digging. Um, but but that's the deal. It's honesty, and it's like you said, he's not a promoter. Right. He he's a race car driver. <coughs> but he's learned he's learned that though. Yeah. He's learned that. Keep my hands away. Yep. You know, I, I own the track. Yep. When it comes to dollars and figures at the end of the week, we'll talk during the week about some things. Yep. But when it comes to, um, from what I've seen from my side, when it comes to making decisions, he may not agree with it. But he'll stay. He'll go with it. But Butch runs the track that day. Yep. You know, and that's good. And that's what I like to see. I mean, I like to be able to, I like to be able to go to Butch, and I, you know, I experienced it when I raced. I won't say no names on what happened, but there was we were running really well, and I found out weeks later that uh, somebody was giving free tires for three weeks to try to help catch me. Yeah, and that kind of stuff I didn't like, and that's what I like about what Bill does. He kind of he steps back and lets the, lets Butch do the slowing down of people. Yeah, you know. Well, the tire rule helped that out <coughs> immensely, and the way they police the tires this year, I was very happy with the way they did. Mm -hmm. um, they need to work on it a little bit. It needs just a little bit of tweaking, <coughs> but it worked out very well. What I would like to see with the tires is I would like to see a barometer reading per class. Because every, every tire is different. Yep. Every tire reacts to things differently. Yep. I would like to see 
soaking is allowed, but not you know, frowned upon. When I say allowed, you can't police tire soap. They, I'm telling you right now, you cannot police tire soap. I, I can prove that to you. But you can police durometer readings at a hot run. You can police. You can't police them at a cold thing. Cause I, you can get them back to a regular state of coldness. But at the end of a hot run, <coughs> you can police them. Some tires, yes. I, I got to agree with you on some because because we, we we never used an ounce of soap this year on our tires. We didn't have to, but we did see some pretty inconsistent. I don't have to even have that thing up. We did see some pretty inconsistent. <laughs> Told you should have put him over there with you. Durometer numbers. Well, I have to talk now. We can talk. Right? Yeah, <laughs> you can ask my wife. When it comes to the racing, we can talk. Yeah, we can see the bench <coughs> racing right here. Yeah, absolutely. We did see some inconsistent numbers. Yeah, on hot runs, right? Um, but the cold runs, yeah, we did have a lot of. You know, we were consistent, but the hot runs, and we never had soap. We didn't have. We didn't need to. Yeah, and that's what I think. I think if they, uh, I think durometer readings do a lot. Yep. And I think if you set the rule and say, durometer reading is this. If you're below it, no questions asked. Yep. Um, I'm trying to think of what track it was. Was it last year or year before? I read it on the internet that they actually disqualified the first. Four or five drivers. That was down in Florida. That yeah, was, it was um, no questions asked. Yeah, they had a durometer reading. They were below that durometer reading. The the top four got DQ'd. Yeah, um, and that will cut it out. And the thing is, what's going to happen is you got your leader. He's got the time in Victory Lane. What you do is you check him as soon as he pulls up. Check the other guy as soon as he pulls to the tech shed. <coughs> You'll learn some stuff. <laughs> if you go to like a World of Outlaw or a dirt track race, you pass the scales before you go to Victor Lane. Yep, yep. You know, so I've seen that too. but but they don't have they don't that's open tire rule, pretty much on them. It's just a weight rule. Yeah. So, but yeah, you go to Tech before you go to Victor Lane. Okay. So now you switch over to the end, <coughs> and now you can talk to Terry while he's doing that. Hi, Terry. Hey, Matthew. What's up, girl? What's going on? What's up? Sitting here talking to these guys, Kevin and, and Brad Causey, and we're just having a great old time. Ah, here you Sounds good to me. Hey, did you guys get any snow up there? Oh, we got a little bit of snow. I hear you. We only got about 15 inches. We'll let him get in a little bit better. <laughs> oh, no, we got about a quarter of an inch here, so. <laughs> Trade you. That's a, a big deal for Mississippi, for sure. Well, that's like, I mean, that's like here. I mean, we're lucky if we get two inches in a whole year. Right. I know. Well, not the last couple of years. Last year was pretty rough. This year's been rough. The beginning of this year was rough, too. Yeah, guys, last year. Was up there. You remember the beginning of the year, Terry was stranded in our house? Yeah, I was. She couldn't, she couldn't leave. <laughs> no, that, wasn't, that wasn't that bad, though. <laughs> yeah. A couple of days. It wasn't that big a deal. So. Yeah, it was just a couple of days. So. What's the latest in the region world? What's happening? I, man, I don't know. I hear you got some news maybe coming out soon. We're working on it. We're trying to keep it, keep a lid on it. <laughs> We're teasing people with it. We got a couple of things that kind of transcended into maybe some something that's solid. Can we get some hints on it? <laughs> Sorry. How about some hints? Any hints for us? Uh just to, yeah, we got a uh, you know um, you know first I'm working with Dick Barber and. Um, of course, to do the DC series for the American Mind Field, and he's kind of worked up a partnership with a Grammy Award-winning country uh, music group to kind of partner with him and the team, which is really cool. And uh, we'll let everybody know about that, you know, whenever the uh, the marketing people decide to do that. And, uh, and then, of course, Catherine Leg is coming over from Europe. She's she's able to talk about that now. She's had a deal with Audi that she couldn't speak of what she's going to do for the season, so she's now free and clear of that, so we're looking forward to getting Catherine over here and getting after it, you know, get going, hopefully we can start testing it within the next 30 days and see if we can shift some gears, you know. Absolutely. Sounds good to me. I know. <laughs> I know. It's all good. It's all positive. So that's it. Got a little, got a little reality show thing kind of cooking in L.A., so oh. everything's looking good on that, too. We're Keeping our fingers crossed, of course, you know how those deals can go. They can be trying, trying to get the apparel site cranked up. Yeah, yeah, cool. Absolutely, got my ebook going, so we can get everybody 
go to Amazon and do the Kindle ebook thing and download it right into your computer if you want to and you can have a dangerous curves weekend. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. So, so how's every, everything else been good? Mississippi, you said the weather hasn't been that good? Uh, you know, it's just been, you know, it was cold here, you know, all this week. Really, <laughs> but, you know, we get that kind of weather where it's cold for four or five days and it'll be, you know, it'll be 30 and 20 and then all of a sudden the next day it's 60. So it's just kind of where we are, you know, we're running that Mississippi line it's where you get that kind of crazy weather. And actually, like yesterday, it was in, uh, the low 20s and then tomorrow it's going to be 70. So, kind of crazy. But, you know, you, we're used to it until we grew up. Yeah. You know, with it. You know, you just kind of layer up and go with it, you know. I kind of like it. Thank I like a little cold weather in the winter, though. I like it to be chilly. I mean, it gives me that, especially around Christmas time, you know. Yeah, but when you start going below zero, eh, come on, that's a little too much. I know, it's like, eh, not good. Not good. <laughs> yeah, if you can't feel your fingers and your toes, it's time to take a break. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. I can't feel my fingers. Hey, you know what thing, the crazy thing, I was telling my mom uh, last night, it was so cold, and we were just talking about how we all, you know, what we do, we used to, uh, we used to race in this stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's cold. You know, out there, especially like these indoor races where you're sitting here to pit out, you know, you could, you know, you'd be freezing to death, wrapped up out there working on those darn race cars. <laughs> you know, freezing to death. We didn't even blink eye. We thought it was cool. You know? I've, I've been to many a racetracks and it's been snowing. I know, I know. We used to, uh, we were racing go karts back in the day. We used to go to the, the Winter Nationals for, uh, in Bondsville, Georgia. And, um, and we used to go down there, and no, and it was it really the first of March, to the end of February, first of March, and it was always twenty five degrees down there for a couple of days. And just freeze yourself to death, you know. The racetrack was kind of on a hill, and the wind would blow through there. We'd be all up like in Eskimo suits out there trying to get that deal done. So, you know, you gotta love it. We went to, um, uh, this is back in my younger days, I went drag racing with a friend of mine down to Louisiana. And very first of March, end of February, we left Iowa. And we were in winter coats and right. sweatshirts and all that. <laughs> and we get down and we're, we just get into Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and we're looking for Kmart to go buy t-shirts and shorts. Oh, yeah. Because the weather had changed so dramatically and it was just like, I know, oh. I know it. It's crazy. It's, oh, yeah. you know, it ain't tennis. You know, it ain't tennis. It ain't tennis. You're right about that. Yeah, if they get in it, you know, it's kind of... <laughs> Cool. That's what separates us from all the others. Well, they're canceling football games now because of snow. Too cold. It's, I know. I've never heard of that. Yeah. Have they lost their ever loving mind? Now, Minnesota, I understood. Sure. Yeah, that's a little bit too much. Snow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when it collapses the <laughs> dome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got, we got a <laughs> but they did it this weekend with uh, Philadelphia and Detroit, was it? Yeah. Did, did you see the, the? They built a snowman beside the governor because he said they were every, all the football players were wusses, and they built a, a, a snowman and set a sign on top of it reserved for wusses. Like yeah, that. they did something to that. To, yeah, today they did, or yesterday it was, <laughs> yeah. wasn't it? Was he was mad. The governor was mad. Oh, he laughed at it. No, about he, he was mad at first. The NFL then, commissioner yeah. Yeah, for canceling the game. the game. And these guys are getting paid how many millions of dollars? And they can't play in snow. And they can't play in snow. Come I'll on, I'll drive a race car through the snow for that money. That's it. I play freaking soccer in snow in shorts. Come on, guys. That's what I was going to say. I'll play in shorts for that kind of money. And that was that was freebies. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. How many? Well, how many times you ever been down to Tulsa during the Chili Bowl and it's been snowing? I know. I know. I know. I was actually. I actually went to the very first Chili Bowl. Yep. First one. It, it snowed. It was cold. It was actually, uh, the year before, I uh, was. Uh, I was in Indy, the indoor race there at the dome of the Hoosier Dome. Yep. With uh, I was with. Uh, George Snyder and uh, Blackie Fortune, that whole, that whole deal I was working on there with those guys. When we went into the, that that morning when we went into the Hoosier Dome, it was, uh, it was about 40 degrees, cloudy, 
And then when we came out that night after the patient row in, it was like 10 degrees, and then we were snowed in. Snowed in, <laughs> yeah. I know. It's like, oh, my God. We thought Black was going to have a heart attack before we could get into the car. like... <laughs> 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 Oh my God! Yeah, so you never know this time of year. But it's like what one year, actually, the year before, it was the same year. Actually, it was I was up there working for Blackie. We we're getting ready to go down to to uh, Florida for three weeks, and uh, and we uh, we were asked to go down to run the the dirt cars down in uh, down in Florida in the middle of a snowstorm. I'm talking about we were snowed in and we had to, we drove like 25 miles per hour until we got out of Indiana and on down in Kentucky. So, there you go. Mm. Now, Sunday would have been a good day to have an Endura race out at Langley. It would, wouldn't it? <laughs> they've, can- they've canceled their Enduros. Back in the day when we did them once a month, they've canceled them because of snow up here. Or potential snow, I should you mean, say. mean, that makes a better race. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I would think so, remember, too. you got to have the fans wanting to come out. That's true. Yeah, it may be a good race, but you, you know, everybody, will be want, everybody will be wanting them in the sky boxes. Let me tell you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Night of Destructions. Oh, yeah. They've been packed every single year. Yep. And this is the first year it was actually decent. Last year it was cold as hell, and the year before that. Yep. You know, yep. and packed stands. Everybody loves to see stuff get tore up. Every bit of it. That's and they know they're going to get tore up at Enduros <laughs> and, and Night of Destructions. Bring money. Yeah. Always bring fans and always bring money. It, they were always a blast too. Oh yeah, so. that's like I said. There's, there, I remember back when I was running. We would hit, we'd get 110 cars out there running around that track. Oh yeah, hmm. they throw a green flag and the guy at the front would hit the tail end at turn one. That's right. That's right. I think Matt. Uh, Matt had a Mother Nature call. Yeah, Matt had to run. <laughs> that, uh, that Mountain Dew got him. I think he did run too. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's definitely been cold here. Unusually cold. Yeah. Hey, global warming. Who knows? There may be some truth to it. Yep. I know. I know it. Our ozone layer is uh, depleted. So all that, that cold air swooping down on us. Hey, remember, uh, there, there's been a couple of movies like that. Day After to, Tomorrow. Yeah, Day After Tomorrow is one of them. Jeez. Yeah. We're moving down to Mexico to get some <laughs> warm air. <laughs> you, yep. speak, you speak Mexican yet, Terry? <laughs> no, not yet, but I'm working on it. <laughs> Oh, goodness. No, I'm, not, I'm working on this third language here. I mean, the second language. Sorry. Oh, okay. Third language. Are you up to third language? <laughs> that's, a middle, that's a middle finger salute. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Uh, there you go. <laughs> that's a universal one. I think everybody's learned that. That's a limited vocabulary. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. It's pretty funny. You been talking to uh, Katie and to Candace lately? I uh, talked to Katie over the holidays. She and uh, Candace they went to the NASCAR um uh, I guess it was the Short Track Awards Bank or whatever it was they had there at the museum there in Charlotte. And they shot some film for me uh, of them just hanging out, kicking the ball, you know, kind of carousing some fun and, uh, for our old show that we're working on. Yes. And um, they sent it to me and I passed it over to Kenny in L.A. And, and um, that's it. It's been about a week since I talked to her, but I love those girls. They're cool. They're awesome. I want to help them as much as I can, too. Yeah. Get this thing going. If we can get all this thing cooking, then we're gonna make them famous some way. One way or the other. Yeah, yeah. one way or the other. Mention their names enough, and everybody will get to know who they are. That's right. So well, maybe we can, uh, you know, get them out to LA and let them do some red carpet stuff. I know they'd be, they'd be great for that kind of stuff. So, yeah. All right. Hey Terry. Yeah. We got the one our, our new guest in here tonight with us is uh, Kevin Twitchell. Uh huh. He's gonna run the uh, mini trucks out of Langley. Oh, great. Cool be. She's, she's actually visited out here at Langley, so she's really? seen the divisions running around. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love Langley. I love, I love Langley. I love all the people. Um, you know, Bill's done and Bill's and Chuck's done such a great job out there. Get this back up and running where it should be. And this is a premier racetrack. It's a premier facility. Now, Matt, you may need to get Kevin up to speed with who we're talking to. I don't think Kevin understands knows who we're talking to. Terry O'Connell. She's won 80 million races. Okay. I don't know how many championships. I said 80 million. I'll put that on my website. 80 million races. She's got, she's got over 500 wins. Okay. She's Uh-oh. got uh, three national championships. Now, Terry, uh, what kind of cars do you drive again? What do you want to drive? Three national championships. Now, Terry, what kind of cars do you drive again? Whatever she can. <laughs> what, what, what's the last kind of car, type of car that you've driven? 
Uh, well, yeah, I started off in cards, got some national championships in that, won some major championships. Sprint cars all over the Midwest in California, just cut the old Jimmy Dunlevy. Super modified, late models, horse cars, a little bit of all, you know. Run the cannonball? <laughs> yeah, I've done the cannonball, done the cannonball run. <laughs> Did that for both ways, we had a big time. So with, with all your experience and all the years that you've done it, what kind of advice could you give Kevin? He's never raced before. He's starting out. This is his first season ever. Never worked on a race car. What kind of advice could you give him for his first season? Run like hell. Get out of it or <laughs> run like hell. Be careful. No. <laughs> I, think, I think there's like three or four things. First thing is perseverance, uh, hard work, uh, Educate yourself about what you know about what you're doing. Understand your race car and understand the concept of driving, and also slow down to go faster. You okay. know, those deals that you can overdrive these things uh, really, really easily, and uh, really? not only you know, make yourself go slow on the race but also tear your equipment up. You know, the finish part is first; you must finish, and it's always the number one, the number one deal. Absolutely. Um, well, that's what I told him. I told him that uh, you can't make the car faster if you're busy putting fenders on it. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Doing, doing um, wrong, type, right. wrong type of work. Well, I mean, look at Anthony Perez this year. <coughs> he did. He finished what? Fifth in points. Fourth in points. Seventh. Seventh. Points? He did a real good job though. He, he this stayed. This was his first year in that class, right? Yep. And he ran and four. He came straight Five from races. the uh, arena course. Is that yeah. right? He had a little bit of a tough road, but he did good. He he was smart enough that that he would listen. And he paid, really paid attention to what we told him, mm -hmm. and he 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 did a really good job. I got to give him credit. Um, I see some fenders for him in the near future. <laughs> he learned to but this year to start being dangerous. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 he's going to get a little overconfident if he keeps it in check and and learn and realizes that he's just learning. Mm -hmm. He'll be all right. <laughs> But he'll get a little overconfident, and and I see some fenders and some rims, and yep. in the near future for him. Yeah, but I was pretty impressed by him this year. When I saw him there this year, he did a um, good job. From what I saw, he wasn't overly aggressive. He was aggressive, but not overly aggressive. Seemed like he was aggressive to the track. I don't think he was aggressive to other drivers. Right, right. But and I guess he hit. Right. In, in other words, overdriving the car a little bit right. at times. Um, but I think he'll be okay. If he, like I said, if he can keep the fenders on it. And get the seat time. I think he's going to be okay. Yeah, I, I think he will be too. So um, we got a and we got a new guy, Steve Williams, the mm -hmm. seven. I think he's going to do real well. Emerson's going to do good too. But so we got some new guys in that class that are going to be really good. Yeah. And you've probably got a couple new ones coming in your class too, besides you. Yeah, it is. I've heard of a couple. Yeah. Yeah. No, he won't be the only rookie. <laughs> yeah, I, I see probably five rookies in the yep. truck series this year. Okay. Now, now you have two things to compete for. Rookie, rookie of the year, year as well as points. Yeah. I told him my personal opinion is I, I'm not too concerned about the rookie of the year. And from my standpoint of helping him, as much as it is him getting seat time, earning the respect of the other drivers, that was probably the biggest mistake I made when I got into it. Um, I had won a bunch of championships in go-karts. Um, I moved up the cars, felt invincible because now I've got something with a cage around me. There you go. And I had a car that was a winning car. And I knew it could win, and I knew I could win eventually, but thought I could win the first race. Um, made a lot of enemies, tore some stuff up, and the one lesson I learned was, take it easy, earn the respect, they'll give it back. Yep. Because I know the first time I got my first pole, I got turned head on into the turn two wall, coming out of, turn, out of turn two, the first pole I ever got. And it happened to be the guy that I got into it with almost the whole year. Yep. I didn't even go up into him. He just turned hard left and just slammed me head onto the wall. Yep. And I learned that day that, like I said, sometimes you got to slow down, get that respect to the drivers. And I think Kevin's going to be good with that, though, because, like I said, everything he's been talking about has been just that, you know. Of course, it, he wants to win rookie of the year. That's the goal. Um, but can't win it if you don't finish it. That's it. That's right. Got to finish every race. That's right. Absolutely. Run every lap. Finish every race. Mm -hmm. Yep, and it helps. He's driving four, so that makes it. <laughs> <laughs> Verdict's out on that. <laughs> Ford trucks, though. I got to give you that. Ford trucks. Yeah. I, I'm a big Ford truck fan. I really am. So, well, the the older Rangers are just they're a little bit tougher to get them turned, 
Um, got to put a little more work into them, but once you get them to turn, right. they're very stable. Yep. Put in the chassis. <laughs> they're, pro <laughs> they're probably the most stable truck out there, in my opinion. Um, <coughs> um, ideally, the Toyotas are really good handling trucks. But from what I see with the Toyotas, they seem to be really on edge when you get them handling. Um, the Fords, if you can get them right, they're good, but they're up under you. So what else I'm, trying to, I'm, I'm trying to get back in the chat room. Matt, see, there's people the in the room. chat room. <laughs> I'm going to try to go to the other thing. But then it says, well, you try it again. Facebook's been a bunch of grief today, Terry. We've been trying to get into the chat rooms and stuff like that, and it keeps... Okay. It's being right. a... PC. And then it does that. Oh, hang on a second. Maybe, <laughs> well, well, I know why well, it is. While Roger's working on that, maybe we can... Uh, I can fix it in 30 seconds. Maybe we take a few minutes and uh, let Kevin actually thank some of the people that have helped him so far. He's got a ton of people Absolutely. Absolutely. we got a couple more. Oh, I was going to do it at the end. Oh, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just thinking because I'm, I'm taking all his glory. <laughs> yeah. He needs to be talking. This is about him today. I like, I like to thank my crew chief, Brad Causey. <coughs> Without him, this, this wouldn't have happened. Uh, Robbie and Ronnie Davis, I appreciate everything they've done for me. Um, Troy and John Turnage, you know, they've helped me out a lot. Uh, Eric Bucklew, he's constantly, he amazed me every day about everything he wants to get done and help me with and Tory Vaughn. Didn't he say he didn't have a crew? Oh, he said he didn't have a crew. <laughs> I thought he said that too. I, I heard that, that same thing, you know, and I've already heard a couple. Yeah, I mean, <coughs> it's just guys that I you know, talk to every day and just willing to help me out and get this truck going on, on the track. And, and no sponsors as no of yet? No sponsors as of yet, no sir. We'll have to work on that. Yeah, absolutely. So if anybody out there is into Fords, <laughs> they'll notice some Ford dealerships around here. We can definitely make it look good, run good. We got a, a body of paint guy that's going to make it, from what I understand, make it look really nice. It's going to be a real, real nice paint job. We've mm -hmm. got some stuff in the works that's going to be real good with that. So, <laughs> yeah, an hour after. <coughs> what'd you do? <laughs> Probably turn the modem on. <laughs> uh, security. You had the firewall on? Oh, Lord, can All you right. believe this? He kept it from us. And yeah. We could have had some good questions. Three, three minutes ago in the show, and we just got in the chat room. <laughs> what is this? Three minutes into before the show? This show don't never end at eight, does it? Well, we've been trying to. Is that the official time? Eight o'clock. It's oh, supposed to end at eight o'clock. Oh, I thought it was seven to nine thirty show. You know what? We're going to bring that up, too, because you brought Steve, or Brad, you brought it up. Uh, our NASCAR cafe deal. I was on the other side of the fence watching it. And that was cool. From, from the internet side, and I tell you what, it really, it's really nice. That's the neat way to go. Um, it was nice having it in you know, that kind of an environment, and you know, it's kind of neat watching you know, everybody walking behind you, and you know, just the, the atmosphere better than a billboard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of neat. Did you see when the guy came up? Uh, when? Hello. Okay, I'll hang up. Call her back, or tell her to call back. Um, when the guy came up, Dan Brody and I were sitting up there and I was interviewing him and, and a guy walked up and says, are you guys doing a gay TV show or something? I didn't know oh, what we yeah. were doing and I think he did it on a dare. But that was kind of, it was kind of funny. That, did it make you a little nervous? Did somebody no, call that I, I didn't. I would say it's an earring, but I got three of them so I can't play No, no, I don't know what his deal was. I think it was a bet is what it was. Mm -hmm. His buddies were all sitting down there and said, I'll bet you to go up and do it. I think that's what happened. So, But yeah, no, it was cool. Yeah. Having Joe Hendricks on there, that was cool. Yeah. And Al yeah. Pierce, he's always fun to talk that, with. I'll tell you what, Joe is another driver. Speaking of drivers that have come a long ways, I remember watching Joe race go-karts because he raced with us back in the day. Yeah. Um, he was a couple years behind us, um, a little bit younger than us. But he's come a long ways. And yeah. to run the way he's done this year is, I mean, he came out of nowhere in my eyes. Yeah, and really turned it up. But that's another one that seemed like at the beginning he kind of took it slow. He didn't overdrive it, and kind of built his confidence up, built the car up, and then got it to where it needed to be. And then this year he just turned the heat up, and just won't want a whole lot of touching him. Yeah, you know he may not have won every race, but he was very consistent. 
And, and I was just getting ready. Yeah, that's the word I was just getting. He was very consistent in what he did this year, mm-hmm. you know, and, and did a really good job. Oh, excellent job. Really good job. Came back from adversity quite a few times. I remember a couple times right there the last lap. Somebody spun out. Front, I think it was Stephen Kesey spun out. They got together, tore his car up, didn't finish the race. Him and Jamie Price. And sometimes that will ruin your whole <coughs> but they didn't let it get to him. They rebuilt it, came back next week and ran consistent again. Yep. Like I said, he didn't win every race, but he was real consistent. I think he – so. I think he, I, I think he actually won that next race after that. Okay. Kesey's another one that's really surprised me, because I remember when he tried running late models. Yeah, I think what you saw with Kesey in the late models wasn't Stephen Kesey. Um, I know Stephen from a long time ago. I used to ride with him and his family out on their. They had a little dirt go kart track in their front yep. yard. Um, and Stephen's got talent, and Stephen's got knowledge. And of course, Danny's got knowledge. You know, his uncle Danny Baker. Um, I think what you saw in the late model was he was running Danny's old car, yep. Danny's old equipment. But the only thing he had new was tires. And I think you saw him in a lack of equipment is what you saw in the late models. He was smart even in that. But I think in the in the Legend series, he's found his place financially. Yeah. And I think that's the reason you're seeing a big difference in Steven and what he's running now. But he's he's always impressed me here, especially in the Legends. He really impressed me in the Legends. I figured he might be one of these that came out. And I was hoping I didn't get to see it, and I didn't. But one of these that thought he was going to be Superman. Right. You know, and he didn't. He has come out, and he has really, like you said, he's matured in the Legends. He's kind of found his place yep. and runs really well. One of the one of the better drivers. Him and Joe I really enjoy. Mm-hmm. In the Legend series out there, they're two of the nicest guys out there. Yeah, that's another series that's really gotten good. I'm, I'm kind of shocked that the car count has fallen off on that class, but I think that's a lot of finances doing with that um, more than anything. <coughs> yeah, and you're seeing kind of a, you're even seeing it in late models now. You're seeing the kind of a changing of the guard. You, you're seeing new drivers come in, mm-hmm. and a lot of the older ones are starting to drop off. So yeah, legends, you might get a little bit of a lull, but I, I think you're going to see those numbers pick back up. Yeah, it'll pick back up, especially with after having the nationals. I think a lot of people enjoyed coming to Langley. That was a good weekend. Um, Very good weekend. I was able to make it out one night to watch it. Of course, I got all the updates from my brother and my yeah. dad because uh, my brother was racing in it. But um, that was a really good weekend. Yeah. Um, I know talking to my brother. And them, they they were really impressed by the way it was ran. Of course, they've run a couple of the national events down in Florida. Yeah. And um, so they kind of knew what to expect and knew how it was ran. And um, one of the biggest pluses I see with with what the the national series does that I think Langley Speedway could learn a lot from is um, one of them is the race receiver that they run. Yeah. The race receiver, for those of y'all that don't know, is where they um, they have a separate earpiece. Yep. You have an earpiece for your crew chief in one ear, and then you have a separate earpiece that's hooked up to the race receiver that at yep. any time the officials can get into your radio and tell you what to do personally. Yep. So like under caution, when you see them trying to stop people in the front straightaway and get them lined up, you don't see that with the Legend Nationals. You'll all of a sudden see a car that's running second. He'll drop out and drop back to 10th or pull into pits, and you don't know why. It's because they've told him to do it. And in the Nationals, what they do is they give you one warning to do it, the second time, you're being parked. And it's not parked for a lap. It's parked for the race. Yep. Um, another thing is, if you bring out a caution intentionally, or you spin out and you just sit there and wait for the caution to come out, and then as soon as it comes out and you go take off, a lot of times they'll park you for that. You know, it's not a whole lot of games played with the Nationals. And the race receivers help that out. It helps, like what you said, with the running order, getting everybody lined back up. I, I think they're a great idea. I've, I've said that all along. And caution comes out. They come across the radio. Say caution's out. Yep. Because um, they're the first ones in that. You can literally run a race without a flagman and lights with yes. a race receiver. Yep. You, you literally can, and then there a lot of <coughs> series are running them. Yeah, and I like the race receiver because I've been the victim of somebody not realizing the caution was out. I I totaled a late model because of that. Yep. I slowed down for a caution in front of me, and a guy came around and he was on the back straightaway when it happened, and I was in turn three and four. He hit me doing about 60 miles an hour after yep. getting the caution was out. Yep. I couldn't tell you how many times I've seen that. <coughs> that drivers will be out there, the caution comes out, the spotter's not looking, nobody's or any of the other crew has said anything to him. Yep. 
the yellow flag can be waving and the guy's still just hauling ass and just not watching the yellow lights either. Yep. Agreed. Come around the corner and bam, got somebody right there. Yep, and with the race seater, I know it's if you, you know, we're all, we talk about economics and we don't want to spend extra money, but I tell you, that's really a big safety thing that I think is a really good investment for any race team. It, it um, saves you a few thousand dollars and having to repair a race car, it's well worth the exactly. couple hundred that it takes to hit one. Mm -hmm. Now that you got a chat room now. <laughs> oh, I'm just catching up real quick. <coughs> See, I can't get on chat room, so I get mine through text messages. You get yours through I'll, text? I guess i got to tell my wife hi, because her and my little baby girl are watching this right now. She's I, she sees, well, so. <laughs> See, yeah, she didn't come. She's not on the. She don't have to be. In she the yeah, she's she's in the yeah she can watch it on the deal. So you got to remember, we get lots of people watching the video that aren't don't want to even mess with the chat room. Yep, and I did at first. And then I learned about the chat room, and I got involved with that. And uh, then I got Kevin. What did I do? I sent you a text message. Told yeah, you to log in. Yeah, sent me a text message, and I logged in. I, I just sat there and watched what was being said and stuff like that for the first time. It's pretty cool. This has been a lot of fun doing this. Um, See my buddy Eric I mean, just joined. What, what's nice is when we've gone to different race tracks, and if we've got our shirts on, her hats on, uh, we've had NASCAR officials come up to talk to us. Mm -hmm. Of course, the drivers that we've already talked to, we talked with them, and people that were watching the show, <coughs> they were on. Come talk to you. Oh yeah. See, I, mean, I can't. I can't that, get this. I can't get the broadcast to come on. Well, don't get the broadcast to come on. Well, I don't need to. I, I know, but it won't come on. We're doing a good job on our own, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got. I got other securities in place. I tell you, I got too many kids have been playing around here, so I started locking it down <coughs> harder. But uh, yeah, I mean, we were at Martinsville uh, for the. Martinsville in the spring race, the NASCAR official came over to us, oh man, I love your show, it's mm -hmm. great, you know, all this other stuff, we gave them a couple of shirts, you know, uh, and I've actually got people now that are sending us stuff wanting autograph pictures of the crew and stuff like that, so. Mm -hmm. Now Matt, can we can we tell everybody now about the new Pro 6 you just built me? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> wish. <laughs> I wish. I know where one's at though, you can get very reasonable. Hey, remember my wife's watching this. Mm. I've, already, I've already told her that I'm done. Oh, uh, but you just sat there and got Never your say <laughs> never. No, I'm. He was out of it, so I talked him back in. I'm, I'm done on the driving side for a while, at least. Uh, like I said, my daughter's my first priority right now, and racing's my second. And when she's when she gets to the point, you know, you can race at five years old now in a kid cart. Yep. So I've already told my wife, you know, we'll put a lipstick holder on it or a chapstick holder or whatever she wants. And we'll get her a little kid cart and see what she wants to do. Because I'd, I'd really like her to be racing. That would be really neat. Yeah. And well, you got a niece racing. I do. Macy. Macy is running the arena cars right now. Yeah. Um, I think their next race is just after the first of the year in January Richmond. 8th in Richmond. And then when the arena cars are done, she'll race in Bandoleros. Yep. Which hopefully Langley will... I'm hearing some talk about possibly Laney maybe going to run them on the new there, track. There's talk. So if that works out, that'd be really good because then Macy will be able to stay local. Um, as of right now, she runs the Bandoleros at Old Dominion. Yep. Um, her and her brother kind of, her brother comes to Langley whenever they're not running the Bandoleros. And he's got the same mentality. You know, Macy's the first priority. Whatever she wants to do is where they'll run. Yep. If she decides one week she doesn't want to run, then they're going to come to Langley and run yep. the Legend car. Um, other than that, they're going to run the Legend probably at Old Dominion. Right. So, but yeah, she's doing really good. She's uh, one of the youngest girls in her class in the arena cars, and I think she's been second fastest and fastest just about every week. Yeah. So she's been in the top two to three of all the cars, so she's doing a real good job. Yeah. She, uh, she started out last year running it, and she, it seemed like it just took her a little bit more time to, to get things. Yeah. You know, but once she took off, boy, she took off. Yeah, I think I think she was scared at first. Yeah. You know, and understandably, she had never driven anything. Yeah. Had never driven a go kart. Um, but the closest to racing she's came was she was out in a race shop every day with my brother. Every day. She's a wrench turn. <coughs> and uh, learn, learn it from the ground roots up. And right. Well, by the way, I think Terry's cell phone crashed out. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. And so she understands the cars now. So she's that's really helped her a lot. But um, as a matter of fact, she's got a website. Macy. I think it's CauseyRacing.com is what they're going with now. Yeah. I think it's also I think they also got MacyCause.com, but CauseyRacing.com will definitely work. Yeah. Um, you seen the new shirts that got made up? No, I haven't seen. I haven't gone to an arena race yet, so I got to do that here shortly. They have new shirts made up. It has yeah. call, Macy Causey on the front. He'll be asking for one. Yeah, and on the back of it it says, <laughs> "You just got flipped by a girl." So I, I'll get one. Macy so, will give me one. It's pretty neat. 
So they're they're having a lot of fun. Um, it's something the whole family is involved with because obviously my brother and his wife they own the car, and then Macy's running it, and my other niece Brooke is their their PR um, yeah promotions person. So it's pretty neat. They're having a lot of fun with it, making it a real family event. And they're very good at it. Macy's doing a really good job driving. You know whatever she gets in, and I know Brooke's been. I was getting ready to bring that up that it's not just <coughs> father, you know, father daughter thing here. This is mom, and this is sister, and and grandma gets involved a little bit with it too. Yeah, well, it's a whole family racing thing. You yeah, know, obviously the grandma used to race out at Langley, used to do some other higher level racing, and then of course, um, Rhett and Dee, no. um, they met on the racetrack, um, racing go karts, weren't they? Yeah, I still remember when it happened because I had to go to the track with my brother next week to kind of take up for him. Um, <coughs> yeah, they met. They met in turn one. <laughs> um, now I have not heard this story, so this is news to me. <laughs> so go ahead. Yeah, anybody wants to give them a hard time? They didn't meet, but they were <coughs> they were racing against each other. I believe it was turn one. That's when the track went backwards. The other right. One. And uh, I believe that if I remember right. Rhett knocked her off the track. And if anybody knows D, she wasn't very happy afterwards. And uh, they had a few words. Well, at the time, Dee's brother is the one that sold the fuel at the track. Donnie. Yeah, Donnie. Yep. So you have to get fuel from him. So the next week, I was buying fuel at the track. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm not, I think they, they just didn't talk for a few weeks. And then next thing you know, I think my brother asked her out on a date. They started, they started dating. dating. Then they went, then they started racing uh, Rockingham. They started traveling together. They'd race Rockingham. Um, Rhett's run Municipal Stadium down in Florida. Um, done a lot of traveling. And of course, now they bought that big hauler. They do a lot of traveling now. They do a lot of traveling. They work from Florida to here. So, yeah. Yeah, they're having a lot of fun with it. Yeah. <coughs> and great, you can't meet a bunch of nicer people. Rhett and Dee, and, and I've always gotten along, and I've always thought a lot of them. Yeah. You know, when I ran Legends, you know, Rhett helped me out quite a bit. and So, great people. They really are. Yeah. I enjoy, and Macy is just a cute as a bug in a rug. And well, Macy has a has a good time with it, and um, you want to hear a funny story about her? Um, we, my brother and them rented the track one day. Well, when I say they rented the track, they co-rented the track. Greg Edwards already had the track, yeah. and Greg offered that. It, Brett and Dee are really good friends with Greg, right? And Greg said, "If y'all want to come out, because uh, they were doing a, a videotaping for uh, Dateline right. for Macy, <coughs> and so she needed some laps to run around the track." Well, Greg had just gotten done with his practice run. Macy gets in the car. And she goes out and runs, and she comes back in, and she says, I can't run out there. I said, why? I said, Greg's put rubber all over the track. So they videoed Macy going down to Greg, and she told him to stop putting rubber on the track. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't appreciate it. <laughs> and I don't think it works that way. <laughs> so Greg apologized. If you know Greg, yeah. he, he played right along with it. He apologized. It was really good for the footage and everything. And uh, but they've had a lot of fun with it. And like I said, they've had a lot of help you know, from different people, and it's really helped out a lot. Yeah, and like I said, they've made it fun. You know, they've made it enjoyable, and they've made it a family thing, and that, and that's the good thing. Yeah, and they're they're just like me in that way. Um, when they stop having fun, they'll either take a break or go somewhere else for a little while. Yeah. And sometimes it's what you got to do. You need to. Sometimes I think you need to try other places to maybe appreciate what you have, or try other places to find something new. And I think yeah. with them, um, I think it's a little bit of both. They went to Old Dominion. They had a good time. Um, you know, they found out they ran the Bandoleros, so it kind of worked out for them. Yeah. But if you notice, every time they don't run the Bandoleros there, they come back to Langley. They come back to Langley. They still Speedway. enjoy it. Yeah. It's still a home track. It's a lot of fun. And like I said, Bill is really doing a good job to bring the family atmosphere back into it. Yeah. Um, it's not so much political yeah. as it used to be. Um, I think I've been through it with the non-political days. I've been through it with the political days. <clears throat> and hopefully it seems like it's getting back to not as political. It's more good old boys. Let's it, have some fun. Yeah. <coughs> and that's what I like. Well, it's not I'm going to favor this guy over this guy. It, it's you race, that's where you finished. You did it the right way and the conversation. Right. You know, it's not no – you don't see a lot of favoritism going on anymore. I think the, the first step that Bill made in – getting that to happen was getting rid of everything he had racing wise you know yeah when he when he showed his intentions to buy the track everything went up for sale yep the trucks went up for sale the carts went up for sale you know the 
Pro 6 went up for sale. <coughs> that shows me right there that you're really going to run the track and not run the track. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, and he knew that was going to be a little bit of a problem. We had some long discussions about that before it happened, and um, to be quite honest with you, I think even if he held on to everything, I don't think it would have affected it. At the time, yes, as a perception. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, um, I think perception is where it would have gotten the problem. Would have gotten the problem, um, exactly. It's a prime example. When Ice Race against Hudson Hall, back when Chuck and Wayne ran the track. I can honestly say, because, the reason I know this is because I helped Hudson a lot. Yep. I was over at the Edwards' shop quite a few nights helping him fix his car. And I will tell you that Hudson, you know, people can say what they want to, and, and the rumors fly, they're always going to fly when your dad runs the track. Yep. Yeah. But I can honestly tell you that Hudson did not get any favorite treatment. Yep. No, he didn't. And that's what I liked back in those days, and that's where I liked where it's going back to. Yeah, you know, and like you said, rumors <coughs> can ruin a track. That's why I'm glad Bill kind of backed away from the racing side of it and just went to the owning the track side. And you don't have to worry about the rumors. Yep. You can't have rumors if you don't have something out there. Exactly. And then in a few years, once he builds everybody's trust up, then maybe he can bring a few of them back or buy a few and do what he needs to do. And do what he well, needs to do. Yeah. Well, he got, was the night of destruction? Didn't he get to go out and play around some carts or was it something else? It was the, some other race. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he went yeah. out and ran the damn um, car the wing, car, wing carts. Yeah. And that's a passion of his that he'll always do. And, um, yeah, he had, a, he had a blast doing it. Oh, yeah. He did it just to do it, you know, yeah. because he still loves that racing. He still loves doing it. But he's smart enough not to do it every week. And he's, but he's, from a yeah. business standpoint. Yeah. We were going to put him back into Pro 6. Mm hmm. Just for a race, just so he could go have fun. He still wants to race. I don't think he would want to get back in a pro six right now. He may, uh, want, he may want to, but he, he may not did, want to. He didn't want to. <coughs> he may want to get back into something, but I, I think a pro six he, would probably. No, nah, he did, and, and he was, he was probably still a little nervous about it, but I think he would have. I mean, you know, we fixed that problem. Yeah. You know. In case you don't know what happened, his drive shaft broke. When it did, it basically took his arm out, right? Correct? Close. The third link, upper <coughs> link, mm -hmm. came loose. And when it did, it dropped the front end of the um, the rear end down, mm -hmm. and it pulled the drive shaft off going down the back stretch. And it was flinging in there, and it went through the, the cage, or went through the... Okay. Firewall in there, I guess you could he's call lucky it. He's right now. Yeah, he's very lucky he's got an arm. Man. And um, and that's the car that I got. Okay. That I'm driving. Okay. And we've gone in there. We've actually. It happened a month later um, to uh, Brett Hamilton, but it did not. It went. It came through. If you've ever seen, we're in a cockpit. Yeah. yeah. And it they came have, through. They and have it, the hoops like we have in the leg Yeah, and it took the hoop. It took the hoop all the way out. Is the hoop going all the way around or just around the bottom of those? Uh, it's an, it's all the way loop. around, and it literally took that whole <coughs> loop out. So we've gone in there, and the knuckle, the yoke, mm -hmm. and the knuckle is what did it. Mm -hmm. And so we've actually got quarter-inch steel plate in there mm -hmm. and another loop. So we've got literally four loops in there now. Now, is that a requirement they put on those cars now, or is it just something y'all <laughs> Yeah, we're kind of requiring them. Okay. We are strongly suggesting people get them, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and they are, you mm -hmm. know. Well, yeah, you can't, you can't, can't skimp can't, on uh, can't safety. Throw, can't flip your nose up at safety. Yep. But so what else? We need some glasses so you can read or something, Matt. Yeah. Brown ticket. Give me a bigger screen. screen. What can we get? Uh, here. What can we get Kevin talking about? What do you want to talk about, Kevin? I tell you, the poor boys haven't been silent. You two guys get revved up and start doing Yeah, hey, I think he's just been enjoying this. Yeah, this is hey. fun, But now, man. you get the whole premises of, of what we do. <coughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Brad and I have fun. Yeah. Finish, finish every lap, every and race. have fun, right? You know, and and, and I, you'll be just fun. Thing, anybody I've ever talked to, and they start bitching and groaning about something, I said, "Listen, if you're not having fun, just haul that sucker back, sell it off to somebody else." And yep, and that that's kind of what I did. Um, I sold mine and got into the late models, ran the late models for a little while. Luckily, I was fortunate and drove for Ricky Henson and those guys for a little while. But uh, once that deal was done, I took a break for a few years. I just wasn't having fun anymore. Yeah, I just stepped away, took a break, and then drove for Joe Farabee 
for a year, and that was a lot of fun. But there was Did, a lot of politics going on. Well, yeah, well, I was getting ready to say, I can remember somebody on the front stretch. That was Pitt Road. Pitt Road, yeah. That wasn't my fault. I'll never take credit for that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, but the story he's sticking to me, it. Me and Brandon were really good friends. We still are. That was a big misunderstanding of something. That, that whole night started at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Brandon. That whole thing that happened. It started at 12 o'clock. Brandon Henson. Brandon Henson, yep. I have a lot of respect for his family. They're great people. Still do. And we're actually good friends again. But that was something that got stirred up. I don't get involved in the rumors, gossip, stuff that goes on out there. But we, 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 ran, about, <laughs> we ran about every five to six races. We didn't run every race. I told Joe when we started that I didn't want to run every race. I wanted to have fun. I don't have fun running every race anymore. So we did. <coughs> well, every time we came, Matt could tell you where we used to park at. Right over by that pole. And it was a, kind of a popular spot. Well, we always got there early so we could have that spot. Well, I guess some of the guys had gotten upset because they parked there every week. And then we come every five weeks and we take your spot from them, was what was said. <laughs> so that See, one week, going, right? yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. that one week was planned. He's told me about it before. The guy, one of the guys in the division showed up early, real early, and got that spot. And not only did he get the spot, but he pulled his car off the trailer and parked it next to the spot. So we couldn't get the spot next to it, which was two of the good spots. So we pulled over next to him. And <coughs> before I got there, my brother had asked him if he'd mind moving his car. Because we had two cars to unload. My car and my brother's legend. So he had some words to say to my brother. My brother's, if anybody knows my brother, he's pretty cool headed when it comes to that kind of stuff. He kind of just lays back and he takes care of things his own way. And uh, so when I got there, he told me about it. And I'm a little bit different than he is. I go over and talk to him. <laughs> and I asked him if he could mind moving it. He said no. So he had his car parked in front of the telephone pole. So I put my car in front of his. Well, kind of hard to move your car when I'm in front of it. So long story short, a bunch of stuff got started. During the race, Brandon had a little bit more power than I did, so on the first five laps, he would kill me. I had a three-year-old motor. Well, then after that, he uh, got into me coming off turn two, and I guess I just had enough. And went in turn three, and he lifted, and I didn't. And he went for a ride, and when he did, he turned hard left back up into me. After the wreck was over, we both pulled down pit road to get our cars fixed. And then when he was coming out of pit road, he decided that we weren't done yet. So we had a little, little fun on pit road. Do, do, do you hear where this is going? But oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. There's no fun here. <laughs> this is over a parking spot, and Absolutely. they're tearing up two cars. Absolutely. Here, here, here's what I'm going to tell you. Which division was this in? Super Street. This was uh, Grand Stocks. Grand Stocks. Oh, Grand Stocks. That's, yeah. right. That's right. But long story short for this, though, lesson learned. We, we almost ruined a friendship over it. Yep. We didn't. Believe it or not, I was at Ricky Derrick's shop. His dad came in there. We had a talk. And we got it straight. Um, and we both said that night that, you know, you got to have fun first. Yep. And that was when both of us were starting to lose fun. And so I took about another three weeks off after that just to kind of get my composure back yep. and not let it, you know, affect our friendship. It's not worth it. Went back and, uh, like I said, ever since we've, we've had the utmost respect for each other. Brandon, if anybody knows, Brandon is the cleanest driver you'll find out there. Um, it's just one of the misunderstandings. But you're right, it does happen. People are going to lose their heads occasionally. Yeah, I don't care how cool, calm, and collected you are. I've even seen the Edwards do it once or twice. Not very often, but it, it's very not something. very often. But, but I have seen them get upset. But it, 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 it's okay to get upset. The thing is, is that how big of an ass you make out of yourself right, right. after well, get you get upset. It, get and, over it, and, and that's what my brother told me on the radio. Right when it happened, he told me he told everybody to jump out of the way, basically, because he knew he saw it coming. And then right when it happened, because one thing we've always been big on is how you treat your sponsors. Yep. You know, your sponsors put a lot of money in that car. Or they may not. I don't care if they put $5 in your car. It's money they took out of their wallet, you know, to put into your car. Yep. And my brother has always taught me that you always keep your car looking nice, and you always look like you need to look at the track. If you want to have, like, a fool out in the pit area outside where nobody can see you, that's between you guys. Yep. But first thing he said when he hit me was, stay in the car. And, of course, as a driver, when that happens, first thing you want to do is get out of the car. You know, and that's the biggest thing he told me was, just stay in the car, stay in the car. And uh, so I did. And you know, the, the officials and everybody got it all handled. And uh, you wouldn't believe how many people actually came up to me at the end of the night. Even though they knew that I drove them kind of dirty on the track after what had happened, that, you know, they had a lot of respect for me. Yeah. Because I did kind of just leave it on the track. Yep. 
when I could have jumped out and made a real scene. And to Toby Davis. Yeah. You know who I'm talking about. Legends, right? We ran Legends. Yep. And I think it was it was our next time. We were getting ready to go to South Boston or something. Just figured out what was wrong with the Legends car. And I forget what happened. Something happened that night. Coil went bad. So, got it fixed, and we're in the back, and I'm running against Toby, and I, was, I, I knew I was faster than he could, he was, I knew I could get him, you know, but he kept chopping me off, chopping me off, well, we had a couple of cautions. I got by him one time, and was getting ready to check out, caution came out, reverted back to the last completed green flag, went behind me. Love it. And we were allowed to run raise at that time, and, and Aaron, my spotter at the time, I said, and I was getting upset. He knew it, and I says, next time he cuts me off, I'm just leaving my nose in there. I'm going to show that I'm not scared of him. You know, I, I, that's what I was thinking. But I said, I'm going to leave my nose in there. He said, you do whatever you got to do. We'll fix the car. Oh, that game on. <laughs> and we're hearing that mentality anyway. Oh yeah, I mean, you know that was the wrong thing to say. It wasn't the wrong thing to say, but I drove it in, got by him. He hit me in the right rear. I was that far past him, and we both spun out. Off we went. I refired, took off, tore his car slam up, tore the, the and actually that's how we found out the rear end of my car was bent. So that was it. Fixed it that night. Gone all year with a bent rear end. Couldn't figure out why, but after that we figured it out. Put a new rear end housing in it. Well, I pulled down pit road, and I'm not really laughing, but I'm just like race over. <laughs> and Matt Leach and Aaron were with me. And Matt's on this side holding my door shut. And Aaron's on this side, and I'm like, what is going on? And they said, here he comes. You know, just stay in the car. And so I heard somebody say something, and I was trying to get out. You know, I was getting unbuckled. They said, no, just, just stay in the car, stay in. And it took sheriffs and escorted Mr. Davis out. And he got <coughs> fined, and nothing happened to me. I was just fine and dandy. Yep. I stayed in the car, stayed out of trouble. I like to, and that's the point of that. I like the theory of leave it on the track. You listening? Yeah. I'm yes, not sir. gonna say. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm not gonna say you're not gonna have an there issue. There will be more stories after we get done here. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I got a few stories for you. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that you don't get mad, and you don't wreck people. Uh, but leave it on the but track. But leave it on the track. I agree. Um, temper, tempers I agree. will happen. Yeah. There's no reason in the you know the fist flying and the the things like that. Um, I'm not gonna say you know I haven't felt like I wanted to sometimes, but like you said, I mean. All, then you're getting fined. Then now, not only is your car tore up, but now you got another two hundred fifty dollars that the track's getting from you. Yeah. And you're already complaining about getting all your money. You know, now you're giving them another two hundred fifty dollars. So, yeah. And sponsors, they they love it when they love to see the rubbing and the beating and banging. They don't like to see the fighting. I haven't I haven't met a sponsor yet that has told me here's five hundred dollars go hit go whip guy. his butt. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, and sponsors don't want that. <laughs> now I have seen sponsors say, hey, I love the way they kind of beat and bang out there. I have seen that. You, well, yeah, uh, they enjoy the excitement of it. I'm, I'm going to name, there was a race at one point in time. <coughs> and I'll leave it a little bit more tight as to who it was. I was one of the major sponsors on the car. There was another large sponsor on the car with me. During the race, it was just so much crap going on between the two drivers that I was also spotting for this person. He came over to me. He says, you tell him, I don't care what he breaks. I will fix the whole damn car if you have to. Put his ass in the wall. <laughs> Period. Yep. And it went that way. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, I mean, there, there are times. We can put that in front of my cup for. <laughs> Is that another one of your sponsors, Matt? Is that why the glasses are sitting up there? Yeah, actually, yeah. Speaking of that. So what do we need to do? who do we need to talk to to get some glass some of these glasses that you got? I can't tell you. Because you know <laughs> I'm just trying to think. I mean, apparently they work good day and night. Yeah, they. The last good. night of the race, you were wearing them. Yeah, and, and actually, you know what? I, that was the truth. I could see everything. I mean, they really are good in in low light. Are they still your sponsor? Uh, sponsor as of right now, I think they are. I think they're coming on for next year. Okay. So. Yeah, um, I don't know nothing about those guys either. Yeah. Oh. So, um, so do I know now? I know who we need to talk to to get some. <laughs> Boy, I'm just wondering because I just bought five dollar Target glasses. I'll see if I, I can't get you a hookup. I'll see okay. what I can do. <laughs> now, see what happens when you come on the show. Uh-huh. No, they're great. You come on the show. They really are. 
Lightweight? Oh, yeah. Guaranteed for life. Oh, man. Is it WX? Um, Wiley X. Wiley X. I don't think I've heard of them, have not You should. They're on cup cars. Oh, yeah, those are nice. They yeah, actually... Right, but they've already told us anytime we want anything autographed from any of the guys that wear the glasses, just let them know. Awesome. Um, Charity stuff. They build yeah. them for the military, mostly. Yeah. And That's probably why they, they are, you know, crack resistant and... I wouldn't say, scratch I don't know, resistant. scratch resistant yeah. the whole nine yards. And like I said, they're full lifetime warranty on Yeah, oh, and they, they, they are great. I, I'm highly impressed. I'm an old locally wearer. Wear. I'm not going to, but great. once I started wearing these, you know, that, that's it. Yeah. You know. I like the way they're so, so light. Yeah. yeah. In, in my dashboard in the car, I have a pair of Oakleys and I have a pair of Wiley X's. The Oakley's been sitting there a long time. Yeah. <laughs> I give them my wife. So, there you go. <laughs> But he didn't mean that. <laughs> she knows it. <laughs> but as far as I know, yeah, they're going to come back on board. I think, I think ninety percent of our sponsors are going to come back this year. Oh, good. Um, which is, a, I didn't think that I was going to get that many sponsors right. last year, and I, I just things fell right, and I got the sponsors, and that's what carried us through the year. Mm -hmm. You know, and sponsors hopefully we represented them very well. I, I think we did. Yeah, um. yeah, and that's that's what, exactly what I told Kevin. Um, if you can get on here, that's a great thing because you know, get the people to see you. Um, I've I've actually gone back and looked at some of the past. I mean, people are viewing. I've had as many as five thousand people watching the show. Tonight. Okay. So and plus yeah. we always do a, a the archive version, so people go back and watch those all the time too. Yeah, okay. and I've watched a couple of those. So yeah, I've, anytime you get your face out there, you know. Oh yeah. Um, you never uh, know because. Like I was telling him one time, I was looking for sponsors at the time. Um, thing about that was, uh, it was 2001 when I won the championship. Um, I had enough sponsorship to last about 10 to 15 races, and I knew that going into it. Yep. And so that's basically what I promised them was 10 to 15 races. And I said, if I can run more, that's great, but I'm asking for money for 10 to 15 races. Yeah. And um, one race, uh, I didn't have anybody on my quarter, so I actually put on my quarter sponsor needed, and we won that weekend. And when I did, I. Uh, yeah, of course, mentioned that yeah, if anybody's looking to come on board, I got about this much money left. And um, then they, uh, that Monday, we had gone out of town to, to uh, Nags Head. I got a phone call. Back, that's when Wayne was running the track. Chrissy called me. And she said, hey, I just got a phone call from a sponsor that's interested in me. And uh, believe it or not, that's where I got Sunset Voting Center. Yeah. And they helped me finish out the season. Yep. And um, it's all about getting your, getting your name out there, keeping yourself clean. And uh, do what you got to do. You're, you're representing <coughs> an image. Right. That image is you. Mm -hmm. um, somebody told me one time, don't promote your truck. you got to promote yourself. Right. In other words, you have to show yourself very professional wherever you go. And you have to... <coughs> Richard Petty is the pr best example. Oh, yeah. He is the best... You gotta be sponsor. Your own, you gotta be your own PR person. You gotta be your own right. PR. You gotta go out. You gotta go to these car shows. You gotta be able. You, you fan friendly. Fan friendly. The one thing I've told, and I've told this to a couple of guys, no matter what you're doing, you're being watched. <coughs> right. And you never know. It's just like what he said with that sponsor. They found that sponsor. He put it on there. Well, it's because of what he did on the track. And how he acted that got him that sponsor. Right, right. So you have to be very professional wherever you go. Yeah, one you thing know. you'll find out too, if you talk to all these sponsors, or 90% of the sponsors out there, and I've talked to people and they believe it as well, that have been successful in sponsor getting, is 90% of sponsors are not sponsoring your car looking for a return on their investment. 90% of them are either so die hard into racing that they want to be on a car, yep. or they just want to help a local guy out. Yep. Mm -hmm. And now, if they can get a, a bang for their buck, it's more the merrier. Yep. But you can ask probably 90% of them, and they'll tell you, I'm not in it for the return on investment. So, <coughs> even more happen. the reason to treat them right. That's for your local track, and that will always work great for that. Exactly, and getting the image. Um, like I said, I know back in the day when, and I, I'll go way talk about bench racing, back when Bubba Adams drove the RC Cola car. Yep. <coughs> That year when he drove that RC Cola car, I drank nothing but RC Cola. RC Cola. I think I was probably 10 or 12 years old. That's all I drank. I could go to a, a vending machine. I'd never had RC before that year. And, and drank but RC Cola. That's all I bought. Yep. But and, and people are that way. Mm -hmm. They are so product-orientated. Um, 
when you come to NASCAR. People still use Tide right. because Ricky Rudd, yep. they're Ricky Rudd fans. Yeah. So they still use Tide to this day <laughs> just because of that reason. Right. You know, they see it on the car, they're willing to you know, you know use it. Mark Martin threw something on his, like Ultra Bright or something like that. So they go get that. They'll be doing that. <laughs> I'd say it. Viagra. I was just thinking yeah, that. Viagra. <laughs> <coughs> Look, I mean, it really did. After that, it was on the car. Mike Bliss drove the car, the 27 Viagra car, before yep. Mark Martin did. And it didn't do nothing. But once they put it on a brand name, right. Mark Martin. Yep. Prime yeah. example Dale Jr. could be sponsored by a wine cooler. I guarantee you, all these big bully guys driving that no one drink like Budweiser stuff would yeah. drink wine coolers. Yep. All of a sudden. Yep. They exactly. Drink, they may drink thirty of them instead of ten beers, but they will do it. They will do it. Yep. The, the, yep. But, but like I said, the, the sponsors, if you, you treat them right, they will treat you right. Yep. And that's just how it is. And you know, you got to give them the bang for their buck. You, know, you can't yep. go to a sponsor that don't doesn't know you and ask them for twenty thousand dollars. You can go to a sponsor and ask them for a thousand dollars, and ninety percent of the time they'll they'll give it to you. Yep. And then over the years, they'll actually a lot of times offer to increase what they're doing. Yep. What can I do to help you out a little bit more this year? Yeah, just treat them right. Show your car their business. Yep. Get shirts I, I made. Actually, I actually have people that <coughs> have called me up because they know me, whether it's here at the office or whether it's on myself. Hey, I want to get involved in some of this stuff. You know, <coughs> what can we do? And so I got a little small file building up. People that want to do something and. We'll start hooking people up. And you know what's bad about that story? I'm a little offended by that story, Roger Stoll. Roger was one of the first people I came to looking for a sponsor when I started racing. I, I came said, in here and talked to Faith, actually. And I didn't get a sponsor. I, I think that's because we were already with Lubno. Yeah, probably so. And her, her and so, Lubno are very tight. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you can't go wrong with Paul. No. no. You, I mean, you know he's going to be up front. Oh, and, yeah. and believe it or not, speaking of Paul, that that's what drove me into racing. I've watched Paul, Paul for years. Paul was my idol when yeah. I was watching racing. And he drove for your brother. <coughs> he did. Back yeah. in ninety seven. Ninety seven and won the championship in Grand Stock that year. Yep. It was still Grand Stock. Yeah. Yeah. It won it won that and then uh funny story about that car is um you know, everybody talks about Denny Hamlin. When Denny Hamlin was moving up for many stocks, wanting to go to a higher division, he actually looked they came to my brother's garage to buy that car. To buy that car? And you know what happened? They said they didn't have enough money. They couldn't afford it. Really? So they bought a cheaper one at Southside. And ran Southside. But it's just a funny story because they didn't have the money to buy that car. How many of them cars do you think Denny could buy right now? Well, he went out and, <laughs> and the so story that, has it is that they went out and did a second mortgage to do the late model thing. And I'll show my trophy off. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have both the 2007 and the 2008 <coughs> around the corner here. There you go. Paul Lindos? Yeah. Um... I got Steve Bills in the back, though. I ran out of room. There you go. That's another they, good they, they took a second mortgage for him to start running light models mm -hmm. yep. before Jim Dean came along, and he started running for Jim Dean. Yeah, he's so he's done a great job. And he hasn't forgotten where he came from, from what I've seen. No, he hasn't. And he's very down home. We got to meet him up at um, the Denny Hamlin race. We saw, he we he saw is him. very down home. Yeah. I got a good story for you on that one. Yeah, we saw him in Richmond, and um, me and my brother bought hats just to go get it signed by him. And my brother just wanted to see, I think, yeah. if he remembered them. And um, we got up there, and my brother mentioned him and said, Hey, do you remember me? You came and looked at my car. He goes, Yeah, I remember you. And he, he knew exactly where he looked at it at. And to me, as successful as he is now, I mean, that's just amazing that he remembers something as, as petty as that. Yeah. Well, You'd be surprised. Do you remember yeah. when him and Lubno shared the Wall Award that one year? Uh-uh. <coughs> see, I didn't go to the banquets back then. Well, they crashed so hard together. And, and they, they usually they just gave, gave it to one driver back then. Mm -hmm. Well, they gave both of them the plaque with the big chunk of rock on it and everything. Well, I took Paul up there to go see Denny up at Richmond. He got the garage passes and everything. Went up there and visited with him. And Paul came up with that, and Denny looked at him. He saw this thing, and Denny at that exact moment reverted back to the 14-year-old boy saying, Oh, man, I got one of those at home. And I'm sitting here talking to his PR guy. His PR guy's going, what in the hell is all this stuff talking about? You know, uh, you know, and it was just he just kicked back and was oh man, and, him and Paul had a good time talking. PR guy kept getting pissed because you got a place you're supposed to be. You're now 20 minutes late. Let's go. Oh yeah. And Denny said, I'll be there when I be there. I'm finished talking to my man here. You know. Yeah, everything I've seen from him, um, other than his one little temper tantrum this year when he threw the water bottle after the race, but 
you know, when you got that much on on the line, I think the drivers are, are over criticized sometimes, and I think sometimes we I, need to let them be a human. I'd rather let them see him throwing water bottles and stuff like that than throwing punches. Yeah. Well, I, I, well, I think they need to have that release a little bit. Well, that he got his composure together before he actually got on the interview. That was his own time. Well, and see, that's another thing I got to disagree with. When you get out of that car, you don't want to talk to anybody. I, I do know this for a Agreed. fact. And, and you don't just. And the first thing they do is the press and the reporters. Hey, man, what did you think about? It? And they they go right to you. You know, it's like Tony Stewart, and he snapped on a couple of reporters. Leave me alone. Let me cool down. Get my senses. But that's what the fans want to see, though. And I, I, <laughs> the reason wanna, I can say want, that they want to get to that gut reaction. And the reason I can say that is, I think this year when Langley did that was had Wayne down in the pits to talk to the guys after they wrecked or after they got into an altercation. Me from a fan side now. I, that was the best part of the night. The next to the last or the last race. I loved it. I love it when he, even if you don't catch him right then, let him cool off and you know. Catch That's what you got to do. Yeah. It was just great hearing different perspectives of what's going on. You you can get the rivals built up. Yeah. You know, and it was really good. But sometimes rivalry's good, <coughs> and I got a story about that afterwards. I won't go on here with that. We got we got to get off here. We're going to sit here. We got to get off. Gonna, you'll need a new set of tires. See, I told you we're, yeah. gonna, we're taking it to 9 o'clock, didn't I? <laughs> we're working on it. We're trying. Y'all made a mistake getting me in here. Hey, you can come down anytime. I will. Y'all Please do. When you want me to come, I'll, I'll come talk. Come down. We'll, yeah, we'll come down. We'll get some some people on here. Kevin, you can come down anytime you want to, too. Appreciate that. Hey, he'll, 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 he'll open up. We're, we're working on him. We worked on him really good tonight. <laughs> His problem is he doesn't have any good stories yet. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. We're working on them. Oh, he's we, got we, his feet work now. He hasn't got no driving yet. Sorry. He's got bonfire stories. <laughs> we got plenty of bonfire, bonfire stories. I got some good bonfire stories, too. I got stump burning stories. Yeah. Oh, so, <laughs> anyway, we'd like to thank everybody to, that stopped by and enjoyed our time with us tonight. And for those of y'all, when the new year comes, please be safe and do have a happy new year. See ya. Have a good one. <laughs>